Wow. What an outpouring of just beautiful, awesome comments from beautiful, awesome people. So in this video, we're going to address a few things because I want to address some things that I didn't address in yesterday's video. I don't know when this one will be out today or tomorrow, but there's some things I left unsaid. There were also tons of questions that I got and tons of wonderful comments from all of you guys. It never ceases to amaze me how much of a family we've all become here. So here's some loose ends I want to tie up. First of all, I've gotten several questions now about Johnny. In fact, I've got several questions over the last few months and I think it's time I finally explain myself. Second of all, I am in disbelief almost at how many of you have been homeschooled or are homeschooling or did homeschool. I mean, it's, it's crazy when you mention something to people, all of a sudden people come out of the woodworks with the same story or similar stories and the amount of positivity that has come from the homeschooling and the people who've been homeschooled. I wanna talk about all that and my feelings on it. And then third, this whole semi-retirement thing. Now, the word retirement is kind of weird. I will never retire. I will always do something. My mind is so active. I love to be mentally and physically active. I will always be doing something all the way up till I'm 121 years old. When I say retire, I mean more time away from the big box that I go to throughout the week. I just... I have a hard time believing that humans are meant to be stuck in a box for 40 hours a week. It's just not supposed to be that way, but it is that way in our society today. And I'm trying to break free of that. Now, that being said, I do, there, there are parts of my profession that I love to be a part of. And probably with, you know, as with many other professions, there are parts that I really do not like to be a part of. But Overall, it's been a really good thing for me, for us, for our family here. And, you know, I, I have no intention of walking away from that. But cutting back on it, absolutely. And it does feel like a semi-retirement. Now, after making that video yesterday and hearing a lot of comments, some of them came out. And I want, I don't want you guys to get the wrong impression. I want you to understand that there were things leading up to making this decision and it hasn't been a decision that was made overnight it well it, it kind of was but it kind of wasn't and it's a decision that has developed over a long period of time and i've done a lot of things right leading up to this decision that allowed me to even make it so let's get started on this now oh and of course you know this is a plant channel so mainly so in the end of this video I thought, you know, I got to show something plant wise. And if you guys watched that last video about the Black Madeira KK that got the roots on it, the way I rooted it indoors, I'm just going to take you under there and show you a little update on how it's doing now and the rest of the house plants that are under there just to give you some plants. So stay tuned and watch this all the way to the end. You better be watching these videos all the way to the end. But for now, we're going to talk about Johnny. I have been dreading this topic for a very, 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 very long time now. Johnny was a beautiful rooster. And if you caught that, you caught it right. He was very near and dear to my heart. And the reason he was near and dear to my heart is because he was near and dear to all of you people's heart. And yeah, he drove me nuts. Every time I would turn this camera on, he would crow. But some events happened that led up to his, I don't want to say demise, he might be doing well and thriving right now. Anyway, let's start back at the beginning. As much fun as we had with Johnny, Johnny was not a nice boy. Johnny was not a good boy at all. Johnny had a mean streak in him. That being said, I kept him around. I had 15 hens out there at the time and he was servicing all of them. And you know what? He did a great job. And he did a great job at not only that, but he also protected those women. He, if, if he saw an eagle in the sky, a mile high, he would make a quick little chirp and they would all run into the coop and wait. And he would stand out there and look. And when the coast was clear, he'd make another little chirp and they'd all come running back out. We watched this happen over and over again. He did everything he could do to protect his ladies. He was a good 
rooster. But he was mean. He was a bad, mean rooster. And that sucker had spikes on his legs about that long, man. I mean, they must have been, maybe they were even four inches long. And that dude was built for protecting his ladies. And that's what we kept him around for. But it got a little excessive. He wouldn't even hardly let us in that coop. He wouldn't even hardly let us in there to, to deal with the chickens at all, let alone feed them. It got pretty nasty towards the end, and I put up with it, you know, because I knew how much you guys loved Johnny, Camellia. I know you loved Johnny. But he was a mean sucker. Well, anyway, long story short, this pole barn over here, I'll take a shot here of it for you, was an old beat up, broke down pole barn with the cement slab seven inches lower on one end than the other. The roof was wide open. Birds were pulling insulation out of it. It was built by the previous owners and it, it just, it was not a good setup. And so after we had this pole barn built over on this side of me, I just tore this one down and had the same company erect a new one in its place that matches it. It's beautiful now and it's actually a shop, not a pole barn, but because we had that done, we had to move all the chickens out of there into another area of the property and I've said that in other videos. But they're in an area right now where they don't have a real nice, it's a good size area uh, for them to run around in, but they don't have a real good chicken coop and that's why we're building this chicken coop. If you haven't seen all these videos, you need to be clicking the links down in the description below or checking out the rest of my channel to find him. You'll know, follow along here, guys. But anyway, we had to move him over here with the rest of the chickens. So that kind of got him out of the way. And that's why at first you guys didn't hear him crowing. Now, I told you he was mean. And the last straw was one day my wife went in there to do something with the chickens and he started trying to attack her. She was already scared of him. He was, I'm telling you, this chicken was built to fight. And he tried attacking her. He jumped up and started doing his spur thing with his legs. And I said, that's it. I can't have this guy around no more, you know, because uh, just like he's protecting his ladies, I'm protecting mine. And as much as I dreaded getting rid of him, in fact, I put it off longer than I should have. My wife wanted me to get rid of him a long time ago. He was mean, but I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it for you guys. And because I, I enjoyed the banter we had going back and forth anyway. And, you know, he did have a pretty cool personality for a chicken. But I finally caved in, that was the last straw, and I said, we gotta do something different about this. And one day, I, I didn't even have any plans to do anything, and then one day my wife was at work, she works at a feed store, and somebody brought in a couple beautiful roosters and that he had raised from, I think, eggs, from little chicks, and he said, they're free to a good home, whoever wants them. We didn't need two roosters, but Shelly fell in love with one of them. Beautiful colors, I'll take a clip of him here. He was in that last video right at the end beautiful rooster and he just so happens to be about the friendliest rooster you've ever seen in your life. I can walk right up to him and he doesn't even care. It doesn't bother him. He's not mean and he does protect the hens. Anyway, Shelly called me up and said, I got to bring this rooster home. We got to get rid of Johnny now. Within a day, Johnny was packed up, brought to her store. Somebody else took him that wanted him and we brought the new rooster home and the new rooster's name is Henry. That's what my daughters decided to name him. And I think they named him Henry because of a guy I work with. I don't know. But I let the girls name the pets around here. And that's what the rooster's name is. Henry. And he's a beautiful, nice rooster. And that's our new rooster, guys. I don't know what to tell you. It just, it had to happen. It had to happen. Anyway, Johnny is probably somewhere else pissing somebody else off. And that's just fine. He's probably in a good place. I'm sure of it. In the meantime, that's the Johnny story. I'd like to introduce you to Henry. Look at that guy, isn't he cool? I can just walk right up to him, he don't even care. Well, I think he's more scared of me than I am of him. <laughs> Look at that guy, beautiful, beautiful rooster. Not a care in the world. If I would have been walking right up to Johnny like this, that sucker would have been jumping up and attacking me so fast it'd make my head spin. Anyway, there he is. Say hello to Henry. All right, so enough about the rooster. Let's get on to homeschooling. I am really excited about this, and I don't even know what to say about it, except that I just want to say thank you to all those comments out there about homeschooling, all the people that were homeschooled or are homeschooling or did homeschool. It just, from everybody I talk to, it, it, they just start coming out of the woodworks, man, and it sounds like, you know, homeschool kids are just very well adjusted to life in general and do well as they go on through life. 
and I'm excited to be a part of that. Not that there won't be challenges, but you know, my kids have gotten a great start at the school that they're at now. I just want more family closeness for us, and I think this is going to help bring it. I think it's going to challenge us a, a, a lot. I think it's going to bring you know my wife and I to a point where we're really going to have to become even more patient and really you know try to be in tune with what our kids need, which is exactly what I want. And it's not going to be easy, I'm sure, but I think it's going to be rewarding in the end. And I'm not getting down on public education. I grew up in the public school system my whole childhood. But it's a giant institution. It's one big giant daycare. And, you know, when you, your kids go to school for 30 hours a week and then they come home and you still have to continue schooling them all evening when they should be playing or doing other things, it just makes you scratch your head and question the whole system. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'll take all the advice I can get. We're still trying to figure out curriculum and what we're going to do. But I think we are going to have a lot of fun learning a lot about what is going to work for us and what isn't going to work for us. And I'm excited and looking forward to the journey. Now let's get on to the retirement, semi-retirement part of this video. And that is all about... I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. I don't want anybody to sit out there and watch these videos and go... I need to quit my job, man. This guy did it. I need to do it too. Hold your horses there, Turbo. I didn't just do this overnight. It, it was a quick decision when it happened, but I had been leading up to this decision for a long, long time. I've always been a very calculated person. And when I was young, when I was fresh out of the Navy, I was 22 years old and decided I need to go to college. And I started going to college and I became a registered nurse. That allowed me to make an income where, you know, it was a decent income, basically. Not rich by any means, but a decent income. But what we did with that income was very important. But what I learned about what I did with that income and what it was doing to me is also very important. I'm going to talk about that now. So my wife and I are very frugal people, and we don't spend every penny we make. We save and save and save and we live way below our means. We have for years because her and I both came from families that didn't have a whole lot. We weren't poor, but we were on the bottom end of middle class. In fact, I hope my dad don't mind me saying, but uh, I grew up in a barn for half my childhood. <laughs> it was a barn that was kind of converted into a house. And I think I've told you guys this in other videos, but I would get up in the morning on cold mornings and bring my boots into the kitchen and put them in the oven with the propane going to warm my boots up because we didn't have any kind of central heat. It, it was a barn. <laughs> my wife grew up, I, I'll let her tell that story if she wants to someday, but I'm not even going to get into all that. But my point is we came from families that had enough, but didn't come from real big means. And so we grew up appreciating everything we had and we didn't need the constant influx of stuff and junk and, and new stuff and electronics and everything else that this world flashes at you constantly. Therefore, we don't need to spend a ton of money. We're okay living well below our means. All that to say, with all of that extra means, I put it into my retirement, put it into my retirement, a huge chunk of it. And I did that for almost as long as I've worked there. And then one day, a good friend of mine, who's about 10 years younger than me, but she, she said some of the wisest words or the most impactful words, I would say, I guess, that anybody's ever told me. She's very intuitive and she just knows what people needs to hear. She just understands how to help you without even realizing she's helping you, I think. Anyway, I am a worry wart and I am calculated and you know, I'm always thinking I got to save for the future and I'm always, I got to keep working, got to save for the future, got to keep working, you know, got to save for that old man in the future that is me that won't be able to work. And I've just, I, I spent so many years worried about that and I would come to work and I'd talk about retirement and I'd talk about my plans and I'd talk about this and that, but it was always about 20 or 30 years from now. Well, one day I was sitting there talking to my coworkers about my plans and Adrian turned around and said to me, there goes Mike again, wishing his life away. 
that one statement, man, that impacted me so much. It made me just, it, it halted me right in my place. And I have thought about that comment that she, she has no idea how much that impacted me. And I've told her and she still has no idea. But it, it just made me stop and it hit me at the core. And I thought, she is absolutely right. That's all I'm doing. I'm wishing my life away. I can't wait to get to retirement. And I'm missing life in the meantime. I mean, I wasn't, I, I'm doing everything I'm doing around here. I'm enjoying what I'm doing, but I could be enjoying it so much more. And that is a big part of what initially led to the decision to cut back. Yeah, is she said this like a, two years ago, I think, but it's planted a seed and started slowly building us in that direction. So because I've saved all those years, I've got plenty of money in retirement. I'm not stressed about that. And I've learned to just let go. This finger thing really helped with that. I've learned to just let go and not worry about it anymore because really after cutting down to part-time now, here I am, like I said, I'm still alive. I'm still eating, you know, nothing's changing. I just have a little less money in the bank. Who cares? Who cares? Since making that decision, the quality of my life has improved drastically and so I guess all I would say about all this is if you are in a situation like I'm in or you're in the same kind of position, you're thinking one way or another, take the leap, man. It, it's about the quality of your life. You know, it's, it's like Pink Floyd said, all you touch and all you see is all your life will ever be. There you go. All summed up in one sentence. And if you want some more motivation and you're scared to quit your job and start a business or do something different, all I can do for you is sum up the words of Zig Ziglar. You can have everything you want in life if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. And that's what it's all about. So enough about that, let's head inside and check out these plants. So you guys want a quick little update on how our little fig is doing? Well, let's just take a look at all the plants here. Anyway, we've got our pothos going here. Look at how, since we potted this up, if you hadn't watched that last video about me potting them up, click on the link. And then we got a video about the fertilizer for these guys. You can click on that link too, and I'll have them down in the description below. But this guy is just growing like crazy. And once we potted it up, those roots started just filling that cup. And they're just busting out of the bottom. They're probably going to start cracking this cup here soon. I'm really amazed at the roots on this pothos and how much they just grow like crazy and invade anything that they get into. So we got branches coming out, shoot, a foot and a half outside of the cup on both sides, multiple branches coming along, and we're going to have to start propagating this guy soon. But anyway, beautiful plant. Now the croton, that's a fun one. I mean, I don't, I'm still learning about this croton. I'm, it's, it's really a pretty, just neat plant, but it sent off a whole new world of leaves here again recently, and it's getting plenty of fertilizer, but for some reason, these leaves just want to be more yellow. Now the last world leaves it sent off were just this deep, beautiful green color, and these guys just, they want to be yellow, but I think it's cool. It's a beautiful contrast between the two colors, and we've got some reds. The older leaves seem to just kind of want to turn a little bit more red, but beautiful croton. And then we've got our uh, petunia there. Now, obviously I've been hacking that guy back and it keeps coming back and I hack it back and it comes back some more. And then we've got our poinsettia, little project I'm working on right now, but it is in just full, beautiful vegetative growth right now. Those top leaves are a beautiful green color. This was our Christmas poinsettia that we, I, I actually cut it back and just let it start re-vegging out here under these beautiful little lights here. And it loves them. It obviously loves them. It's thriving. And here we are. This is what you're here for, guys. The update on the Black Madeira KK. So this is the one that we took the cutting. We just put it on top of this table that we're under right now and let it do whatever it was going to do. There was no cover. There was nothing. And it just, there it was. It rooted. But you can see now the roots are coming out more and more. Now the Black Madeira KK is a slower growing variety. And so I ne this guy never takes off real fast. But we've got those roots coming through now. And if you didn't see that last video about this, I'll put a link down in the description with the rest of them. Uh, but uh, it's really, it's doing well. It's got some roots coming out on this side as well. And I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. We've got one beautiful little leaf out there. And then some green here. We've got a couple green uh, little spots in the bud there that seem to want to start shooting off. But... These guys never really do a whole lot for me. 
uh, like some of the varieties of figs. They just they just start off real slow. But this particular variety, I actually got the parent from KK, the guy on eBay who originally started selling this Black Madeira KK variety. And once these guys get established and they get in like a two gallon pot and you keep water to them all summer long, outside they take off and grow like crazy. Anyway, that's just a quick update of what's been going on with that little guy. I know some of you are going to want to see how he's doing and then everything else we got going on under the little house plant area. It's going to be time soon. We're heading into spring. It's going to be time soon. Start taking cuttings of this uh, petunia basket or whatever you want to call it. But I'm first going to have to hack it back and then I'll just water and fertilize the heck out of it. Force it to flush out tons of green growth and then we can take cuttings. But that's what's happening. That's what's going on. You guys want to see us propagate these? You want to see us propagate some... Uh, some pothos here and maybe even some croton. We're getting closer to it. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Have a fantastic week. And I'll see you in the next video. Adios.